Hi guys. We're just gonna do a little a little story time with some ratchet lighting and some hair that needs to get its life back together, but never will. Um, so I wanna I wanna start um, a series, I guess you could say, uh, a play. I don't know. A series. Let's just go with series of my uh, psychiatric ward mental hospital experiences. I have so many stories to tell that if I tried to record it in one video it would take like two hours at least um, so I'm gonna do like little individual individual stories at a time and name each one and kind of put them all into a playlist for you guys so you can kind of see what it's what it was like in super super detail because if I were to do everything at once I would feel so rushed that I would kind of be more vague about it so I feel like splitting them up into individual stories will let me go into more detail and give you guys a better picture if that makes sense so I'm going to start out with um, basically the very beginning I'm gonna go kind of kind of from beginning to end but I will do some filler videos in between ones that were more prominent or dramatic or more interesting I suppose so, I'll go, I'll start with my very first, um, what is it called? Check-in, or admission, there we go, admission to uh, a psychiatric ward. So, I actually, the third time, the third suicide attempt, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry, the second, no. Yes, the second suicide attempt my parents found out and they took me to uh, a place called the CRC and they evaluated me I talked to them they talked to my parents and they decided not to admit me so then my third suicide attempt my parents took me somewhere else it's a place called Palo Verde it is still a crisis response center but it's just called something different and they do basically the same things so I talked with them I did my absolute best to convince the people not to admit me. I would I was going to throw a fit if they admitted me. I will get to that. So we get to the Pal to the Palo Verde place and I have uh, some towels on my arms because they're they're still bleeding quite a bit. Not nearly as bad as my fourth one, but you know, it's it's pretty decent. So we go into the lobby, um, my mom goes up to the front desk and asks for a schedule or not like a, a, a meeting I suppose to uh, see about admittance. So she has to fill out a bunch of paperwork and then she hands me a paper that I have to fill out that says have you ever tried to kill yourself, what is your depression like, what is your anxiety like what calms you down, what triggers you, blah, blah, blah. And at the time, I was not admitting to anybody that they were suicide attempts. I was just saying they were self-harm. So I checked no on the have you ever tried to kill yourself box section, whatever. And I filled in the triggers, which were yelling and uh, swearing and alcohol and uh, a few other things I can't remember. It, it was a while ago and I'll explain in a separate video why it's more difficult for me to remember that that time that time period of my life because that's a whole other kind of sciencey therapy brain type situation so I fill out this paperwork and quite honestly I lied on quite a bit of it because I did not want to get admitted admitted I was gonna fight tooth and nail to not be admitted um so we fill out the paperwork and we wait like 30 minutes it's taking forever to have this consultation and the entire time I am rolling my eyes and I am infuriated that my parents took me here and that I might get admitted I was boiling in fury so the lady finally comes, uh, she was an older lady, she was really sweet, um, not old, I think she was probably 
I'm okay. So the f I'm thinking about the other admittance. So the the first admittance to Palo Verde, um, I met with a lady probably in her 30s. She was um, she was tan. She had beautiful black hair. Uh, she was really pretty and she was so sweet. So they took us into a, a room called the interview room, and there was several of them down one hallway. And to get to that room, we had to go through several security doors that she had to open with her ID, uh, things like that. So we go sit in the room, and I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. And at the time, uh, they I only people only found out against my will about my right arm. Oh, sorry. Er, I'm sorry. Yes, my right arm. So people knew that my right arm was cut up, but I was hiding my left arm so that I would not get admitted because that would make it seem worse, which it was worse. So she, the lady, a different lady comes in uh, just for really quick, just to take my vitals and to kind of ask why I'm there, what happened, and I told her, it's, she asked explicitly, is it just your right arm? And I said, yes. And my mother interrupted and said, show me. And I, I of course, internally freaked out, and so I rolled up my sleeve, and there it was the other arm that was cut up as well. So, and they both asked the, the medical lady and my mother that why I lied, and I said, because I was, I was freaking out about it, and I don't see how this is important, I don't see why I'm here, I don't understand this, I wasn't trying to kill myself, blah, blah, blah. So, she takes vitals, and then the other lady, the, the one with the black hair, came back in and asked to speak with me separately so she took me across the hall to another interview room that was much smaller and it had just two chairs so it was me and her and I gave her such a good story about why I didn't need to be there I was raving and ranting about I have these really good coping mechanisms it was just an in the moment a sign of weakness and thing that I really regret it I and I'm not suicidal, I don't want to kill myself. I was just really scared and upset and I don't need to be here because I, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, and I gave a good 15 minute, very persuasive speech. I'm gonna give myself props for that. And she seemed to actually be on board with me. Uh, she asked about my past trauma, I told her. She asked how I dealt with it, I, I told her, but I told her I, I'm, I'm so much better, I'm good, I'm great, we're good. And she seemed to believe me and be on board with not admitting me. So then she said, I need to go talk to your parents. And I was like, oh shit, they are going to argue that I be admitted. And they're going to tell all of the bad stories, all of the blah, 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 which were truthful and needed to be explained. But at the time I was like, fuck, do you have to? So she talked to them. She came back and kind of said some things that they said and I tried my best to dissuade her from what they had said so she said to me let's go back to the other room so I go back to the other room with my parents and she tells us well ultimately it's the doctor's decision so I will go talk to her and see what she says and that took about 15 minutes we were all just waiting in the room awkwardly and silent and sometimes they would be my parents my stepdad and my mom not my dad um they would ask questions or they would try and tell me that this is a good thing in which i would just get more angry so 15 minutes later the lady comes back in and says with i can tell with a heavy heart um the doctor has decided to admit to you and i broke down. I, I, I think I, I stopped breathing. I, I don't know how to describe it. When, when she told me that I was getting admitted, I, it was like my, my chest was empty. My mind was empty and I was so scared and angry and upset that I, I wanted to run away. I wanted to go to Bora Bora. I don't care if I have to live 
on a street in a box. I'm never going to come back here. Um, I was so angry, so infuriated, and so in shock and in disbelief. I was like, this can't be happening. This, There's no way this can be happening. This is t just a terrible... I, I, I can't do this. I can't be admitted to a mental hospital. This is not... This is not going to happen, no. So, um, I'm infuriated, and the, she takes us to, uh, it's like a waiting room where she comes and they fill out more paperwork to, to admit me. So, my mom's filling out the paperwork, and I am trying to persuade her with all of my heart not to let this happen. And she says... This is the only other option. Uh, I don't know what else to do. Um, and I would return with, this is going to make things worse. I'm getting better. And she says, look at your arms. You're not getting better. And I said, this is, was a one-time weakness. Excuse me. And that I'm okay. And this will only make it worse. I want to be at home. I want to have the comfort of my home. And my mom, I want my mom to hold me. I don't want to be in a hospital with strangers. And I, the entire 20 minutes she was filling out paperwork, I did everything in my power to persuade her. But she did continue filling out the paperwork and um, admitted me. And I must say, I was pretty cruel to her. I was, I was so angry that we were sitting in the lobby and I was telling her I didn't try to kill myself it was self-harm and she said yes but it's on your arms and I said so it's different just because it's on my arms like just because it's a different part of my body and she said yes and I replied with well now I know insinuating now I know not to cut there and I'll just cut somewhere else and she dropped the clipboard, looked at me with her jaw dropped, and I just looked away and stared off into space. And it was pretty silent after that. They had brought us some, some juice and uh, some water to drink, because uh, we were in there for a good 30, 45 minutes. It was, it was a long, long wait. So the, the lady, the tan lady with the black hair came back from a, a medical room because it was connected so the room was connected to the main hallway and also a medical room on the side so she came out of the medical room and she said okay it's time to say your goodbyes and I looked at my parents and they said I love you and I didn't respond I was silent when they tried to hug me I was stiff I didn't hug them back I didn't speak to them. I didn't say that I loved them. I was so angry. So they leave, and immediately I'm I'm so scared. I I was I was still in disbelief. I was like, this can't be happening. I this can't be happening. I can't do this. This is not gonna happen. So she takes me back to the into the medical room and there it's kind of like another lobby with um i don't remember what it was called oh it's called examination room so then she takes me into the examination room so she's there with one other lady and she tells me okay take off your clothes and i was like zero to 100 real quick i was like yikes so i do so and they have very strict um, clothing policies there so I couldn't keep any of my clothes um, so they all had they put it in a brown bag along with my jewelry I had to take all my jewelry off I had to take my ring off my earrings my necklace um, and everything had to be stripped now I had also not telling anyone had some pretty severe cuts on my hips that were um, they were pretty they were pretty severe they went down to the tissue they were pretty fun um, but I asked to keep my underwear on so that they would be hidden so no one found out about that um, during my entire stay so then they put me in this hospital gown which is I, I never felt more humiliated in my entire life walking in a hospital gown into a room with a bunch of people crazy people my age sorry my hand twitched 
I was, I looked at myself and I, I, I was like, I'm in a hospital gown, a mental hospital gown. Um, and I was so embarrassed that I asked for a blanket and I said, I'm cold, can I have a blanket? So uh, they gave me a blanket and I really just wanted it to, to wrap around me and hide, hide my humiliation. So they take some more information from me and then they walk me in this in the maze of the building through like five doors and we finally get there. Um, I walk in, there's a, a nurse's station on the left. So, okay, so if you walk in, it'll be the nurse's station on the left and I look and there's a long hallway down and there's like a community room and then there's a long hallway that way. So the first thing I see is this girl there um, against a wall with her knees up uh, eating a snack. And then I look to my right to the community room and I, if at the time I could see a hundred eyes looking at me. They, there was probably about, um, I don't know, a good 15 people there, but when I looked and they were all staring at me, I just looked away and hid in the blanket to hide my shame. So we talk, I talked to the nurse, or the, the nurse talked to the, the black haired lady a little bit. And then she said her goodbye to me and she said, I'm really sorry. I know you don't want to be here. And I didn't, I didn't answer. So the, I talked to the nurse a bit and she said, um, I have, we'll, we'll give you some sweatpants, we'll put it in your room, um, I'll show you where your room is, and, um, do you have a bra with you? I said no, because they made me take my bra off, because it had, uh, an underwire, and, uh, there, apparently, you can take that out and kill yourself or stab yourself with it, so I, I said no, I don't, and so she got, uh, it was like, do you know when you're in hospitals and there's like, not community clothes, but clothes, clean clothes that they give people and they, then they just throw away after. Like, it's just, if someone needs a shirt or underwear, they give it to them and it just looks just like everyone else's. So she gave me a pair of underwear uh, and she cut a hole to make it into a sports bra for me. And uh, she led me to my room, which my room was the second door on the left. And I went in, and, and the room was laid out interesting. Um, so I walked in, and there was a bed over here, and a bed over here. And there was a, a bathroom with a toilet and a shower and a sink and a mirror. And then there was a, a dresser on this wall and, and this wall. Um, all of those were glued and nailed and attached to the floor. Nothing could be moved, nothing could be removed or anything like that. So I just sit down and still in disbelief and shock. I, I just kind of sit down and I don't want to go out because I, I still felt so ashamed and so uncomfortable and so just, I don't know how to describe it, just not okay with the situation and so insecure and kind of isolated and um, picked out or, or sorted out or something like that. So I just kind of sat there in my blanket and I removed the hospital gown and they also gave me some socks, which was nice because you're, you're not allowed to walk around barefoot. You have to wear socks or shoes. So she gave me some socks. Um, there's three types of socks. There were small, medium, and large. The smalls were blue, and mediums were green, and the larges were um, yellow. So I got a pair of small socks first, which didn't totally fit me, and I ended up trading them out later. And on the bottom of the socks, they had little... Um, those like rubber pads, little rubber pad detail things so that um, it's not slippery. So I put those on, I put on the sweatpants which are just plain white gray, like the, the white gray combination. Um, they're really baggy, they don't show anything. The sweatpants were 
a bit too long for me and I wanted to at least have some sort of fashionable anything. Not because I'm like, oh, I have to look perfect all the time, but just because I wanted to not be as paranoid and insecure. So I, I rolled the, the waist up a little bit so that it was a little bit tighter on me. And also at the time, I was very skinny. I, I, I hadn't eaten much. Uh, this was when my, um, which is another story to tell, uh, my anorexia began. I, the doctor called it subconscious anorexia. I wasn't choosing to do it. My stomach just wouldn't accept food. Anytime I would eat, it would it wouldn't stay down no matter what. So I was I was um, um, sorry I'm really bad at talking. I I had to resort to Ensure bottles, little protein shakes. Um, that was the only thing I could do to get anything in me. Um, I couldn't eat any solid food whatsoever. I, I could eat cereal, fruit, vegetables, and only a certain few, and not very much, and then those Ensure shakes. So, I was very, I was very skinny. I was probably, I'm normally about 125 pounds, and I think I was down to 118, and I had lost that weight in a, a single week. So, I, it was pretty, it was a pretty quick transition. And so I, I put the sweatpants on, which they're super baggy on me. I'm super little. I, I, I get the blanket again because, again, I kind of wanted to hide in something to just hide, to be away from everyone. I, I, was, I was so scared. <clears throat> so I go into the community room, and um, they're watching a movie. And all the chairs are, are mostly taken uh, except for one directly on the other side of the community room and neck the I, I ask, is the seat taken? And the the girl next to the chair was like, No, 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 sweetie, sit down. So I sat down and immediately everyone was like, What's your name? What's your story? Why are you here? So I kind of was a little bit more comfortable and they all looked really nice, so uh, I was sitting next to a, a black-haired girl uh, and a, a girl with orange and black hair, so kind of like, call it fire hair. Um, and other people in the room, um, there were a few boys, probably about five. There was one transgender boy, there was, and this makes me so sad. There is a little, I believe he was eight, little eight-year-old boy, and it broke my heart that he was there. Um, I will get into more detail once my, my stories continue because I don't really know much about him at this point, um, but he moves his chair up right directly in front of me and asks, like everyone else asks me, What's my name? What are you? What, what? What's your name? Why are you here? And so I say, um, I'm Haley. I'm here because. And then I showed them my arms, and they were like, Oh my god! And they were all pretty appalled because they were they were pretty severe. They weren't any. They weren't little scratches. They were pretty, pretty serious. And so the little boy, um, he said, Do you want to know why I'm here? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he said, I'm here because I lie and I wanted to die. And I said, oh, what do you mean? And he said, I lied to my parents and they got really mad at me and I want to die. And I, I, I really wasn't being a good kid. And so I needed to come here. And I could feel my heart being torn apart that this, this amazing little sweet kid is in 
a hospital for whatever reason, whatever he has gone through. But this little, this little boy who is the sweetest thing on the face of the earth, so, so smiley, so happy. If anyone was upset, he was quick to go comfort them. It was, it broke my heart that he was there. Um, and everyone else was in agreement. They, they all loved him. They all didn't they were like he shouldn't be here and it, it even though he he may have and, and did have mental health issues um this is not where he belonged so other than that um uh, everyone kind of introduced themselves um some more awkwardly than others and um i was introduced to my roommate and uh, I ended up actually switching rooms from um, the second door on the left to the first door on the right. Uh, I don't remember why, but they just ended up switching rooms. So I met my roommate, and she, she was such a sweetheart. She was so sweet. And that was that's pretty much the, uh, the, the story of the initial first impression, first admittance type situation the the first the first piece of the story um the the next part i will talk about is kind of what it was like to be there in general i will be a little bit more general about it because um there's not much to go into detail about like i'm not going to tell you about every single day because every single day was maybe a little bit different from the next but it was all pretty routine so i'll kind of explain to you what happened, any major things that happened, what it was like, the rules, uh, how we carried out ourselves, things like that. So, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a story to tell, and it's, it's not for everyone, but if, if you want some insight, some personal insight in, in detail into what, what it's like, um, I'm here to tell you. So, I hope you all have a wonderful day, night, sunset, evening, twilight, hi, wherever you are, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!